Hello and welcome to another episode of Emotion Ocean Talks. Today I want to tell you about a fascinating genus of animals. One representative of that genus is right here in the picture. Now it starts to move and you probably can see it. An octopus. There are more than 150 octopus species in all oceans of our world. The octopuses belong to the phylum mollusca and they are into the class of the cephalopoda. Cephalus in Greek means head and poda feet, so it's the head feet. What all octopuses have in common are eight arms with two sucker rows per arm and a functional ink sac. So eight arms, an intact ink set, and two sucker rows per arm. But that's not all that an octopus is made of. So let's have a look, have a closer look at the anatomy of the octopuses. And I happen to have one here, meet my friend. Here you can see what is perceived as the head and as the feet. But that's not really correct because most of this potential head is actually the mantle. The mantle is comparable to our torso. That's where all the inner organs are located. The um, heart and the blood vessels, the digestive system, the reproductive system producing either eggs or sperm, uh, the ink sac, the gills for breathing, and I think that's about it. The mantle is not a closed structure. It's open here at the bottom and it is connected to the surrounding also through the so-called funnel. The funnel is a multi-purpose instrument for such an octopus. Um, it is for locomotion, for movement, because octopuses can swim. You have perhaps seen that before. So when they swim, they do it through jet propulsion by expelling water forcefully through the funnel, which gives them the drift in order to swim. When they eject water more carefully through the funnel, they can actually remove silt or sand from surfaces, which they use when hunting or when building digging holes. Then, the funnel is used in order to eject the famous ink cloud. The ink sac, therefore, releases the ink into the guts, into the intestines, close to the anus. Through there, the ink comes into the mantle at the base of the funnel. And so when now the uh, octopus squirts water through the funnel, it will be stained by ink. And in many cases, the octopus adds a mucose to that mix because the ink only impairs the vision of the predator which attacks, but the mucose also impairs the smell. So then it has all the time of the world because it can't be seen anymore and it can't be smelled anymore. Those are just some major functions of the funnel. It's used for more different purposes in addition. Then here on the top of the mantle, it's the head with the two eyes which are lens eyes, means they are comparable to our eyes with the difference that evolution made them separately. It's a different evolution of octopus eyes and ours. And the octopus has only one type of receptor cells, which means that it can only see black and white or gray, but not colors. Within the head is the brain, a highly complex brain, more complex than the brain of lower vertebrates. And there are lots of discussions on how much consciousness octopuses have. They do have some. They can learn some tasks very well. They are able to see themselves in a landscape, in a three-dimensional seascape map, because they are able, when they go on a hunting trip, not, they don't have to follow their own way back to their house, but they can take the straight way. So they do have a perception of the seascape of their area where they live. But all the other discussions on consciousness of octopuses is still ongoing, and I guess they will still be happening quite a lot. So then, in addition to the mantle and the head, we have the very dominant eight arms. 
The arms are connected by the so-called web. The web is a very thin, very elastic skin between the arms which can be spread down so that only the tips of the arms are left as individuals and everything else is connected or the skin can be pulled up so that the arms can be elongated individually and are real individual arms. The web, as you will see later, is very important during hunting. In case of male, oh right, and then usually those arms have those pre before mentioned two sucker rows, which this guy unfortunately doesn't have. So in male octopuses, the third right arm is a very important one. It's called the hectocotylus, and that is used in order to transport the encapsulated sperm which is encapsulated in spermatophore into the mantle of a female octopus and they are close to the female reproductive organs. Therefore, there is some guidance system and once the spermatophore is ejected through the funnel, it will be guided into the mantle of the female. But how does the male actually get its arm into the mantle of the female? Probably it follows some chemical, some hormonal clues that are given off by the reproductive organs or close to the reproductive organs of the female. So here on the tip there must be some chemoreceptors and they find their way or due to them the animal finds the way into the mantle of the female and they are close to the um, oviduct to release the sperm. So and what is now still missing in this guy? We had talked about hunting and prey, so it must be able to eat, right? But where's the mouth? The mouth is located here, between the eight arms. And it is equipped with the beak-like structure, which is really hard and strong. And with this beak, an octopus can crack open crabs or clams, and it can drill holes in clams. So if it can't open a clam, it drills a hole, and then it ejects poison, which is produced by a poison gland, which is also here um, in the mantle close to the head. And this uh, poison, which is injected into the prey, paralyzes the prey, stunt the prey. And therefore then, um, in case of a clam which had shut close, the muscles relax and the octopus can easily open it in order to get to the flesh. Or the paralyzed animal is just stuck to the suckers or underneath the web and will be carried to the ho um, hole, to the house of the octopus, to be eaten there. The whole octopus doesn't have any bones. There is a little bit of cartilage's um, skeleton, but not really to mention. Therefore, the whole body of the octopus is highly flexible and it can move through small holes where you would never believe that such an animal could fit through, which is really a cool thing. But it has the disadvantage to leave the animals really vulnerable to predators. There's no shell to protect them. And therefore, evolution had to come up with some other way how to protect them. Otherwise, those animals would have been extinct ages ago. And there um Protection against predators is camouflage. Camouflage is the ability to blend into the surrounding. The octopus blends with its environment by changing its skin color as well as the skin texture. Those two are components of the so-called body patterns which consist or make up the repertoire of behaviors that an octopus can display. But about them and about the exact way how the color changes are performed by the octopus, I will be telling in another episode of the Emotion Ocean Talks. Let's just say so much because octopuses live in basically all oceans of the world in different depths, on different levels. They are also exposed to different amount of light and to other prey and predators. Therefore, they do have varying uh, uh, repertoire of body patterns available. The octopus, which are all the videos about, is Octopus cyanea. That's a shallow water octopus which lives distributed all over the Indo-Pacific Ocean and can be found around Hawaii as well as in the Red Sea. Oh. 
octopus cyanea, or the big red octopus, can be up to five kilos in weight, and it lives in holes of rock or coral reefs. It leaves the holes only to go hunting usually, and that happens twice per day, once around sunrise and the second time around sunset. The hunting trips usually are a few hundred meter in distance and can last an average one to three hours. The big red octopus feeds on s snails, slugs and crabs primarily. Once the area around a living hole is depleted of that prey, the animal will move to a new hole. Usually that takes a few days to a few weeks. display two different kinds of hunting behavior. The first one is groping, the second one pouncing. Groping is what we can see here. The animal crawls over the reef or over a sandy surface and sticks its arms in every crevice and hole where it thinks that there might be something to eat in there. The animal swims to the destination, to the coral head or rock where there might be some prey and land on it with all arms, spreading the web all over the destination and then using the tips of the arms to search underneath the web for the prey which might be there. Pouncing is associated with a color change which has nothing to do with camouflage. When the animal pounces upon landing, it will bleach, it will be white and then return to the color, usually the color that it had directly before the whole process of swimming and pouncing started. When the octopus found food, it will transport it with one of the arms to the mouth where the prey will be stunned by the poison. And then the octopus might eat it directly or carry it back to the house, to the hole. The next video segment is not very good, but I want to show it to you nevertheless because it shows a typical pouncing behavior. Swim land, bleach, recolor, grope with the arms underneath the web for food and continue. So we say goodbye for this time. Thanks for watching Emotion Ocean Talks and I hope you liked it and you will come back for more. Thanks. <laughs>